Hey, welcome everybody. This is the graphs of tangent and cotangent. Now graphs of tangent and cotangent are separate and they're somewhat unusual from uh, what we know about sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant. So um, get away from thinking sine and cosine, cosecant, and secant, and there's a new way of thinking. Um, so the basic breakdown of tangent and cotangent are a y equals a tangent of bx and y equals a cotangent of bx. And there is no amplitude. If we When we graph it, you will see why there's no height to this graph. And the period is a little bit different because, oh, this should, this should be b, not k. Okay. Um, it's period equals pi over b. Okay, it's not two pi over b. Okay, so it's pi over b, and I'll and I'll um, explain why in a little bit. But we are first going to graph y equals tangent of x over one period. Now remember, in all of these um, break functions, okay, it depends on it based on this unit circle. Okay, and the the tangent graph. It um, starts off with our first two vertical asymptotes, okay, which lie here at 270, which is if we take this and we go negative in our standard position. Remember, we in our standard position, we start off our angle off with the positive x. Um, axis, and we go down to pi over two, right? So this is negative pi over two, okay? So it starts here. On my x-axis, when we start to graph, it's gonna be negative pi over two, comma, my y is my tangent, where my sine is negative one and my cosine is zero, okay? Remember that tangent is going to equal sine over cosine, all right? So if it's sine over cosine, that's gonna be negative one over zero, which equals undefined, okay? Since that's undefined at pi over, at negative pi over two, I have a vertical asymptote, okay? So I'm gonna first graph that. Now I want this to be nice, neat and nice. So I'm gonna put that as negative pi over two, and then here I have one of my vertical asymptotes. Okay. There I have one of my vertical asymptotes. And then if I go back to my unit circle and I go from my positive x axis again and I go up here, again, this is pi over two, right? So there's my x. My y coordinate is going to be sine over cosine again because tangent is equal to sine over cosine. And that's going to be 1 over 0, which is undefined again, right? So I have another vertical asymptote at pi over 2, and I'm going to go two blocks over, two units over, and go pi over 2. And there is lies my vertical asymptote again, okay? So that is the basics of one period. It starts off with these two fences, vertical fences. And now I have to kind of see what's going on in between these two um, pi over two and negative pi over two. So I go back to my unit circle and I see right in the middle is zero degrees, right? Zero radians and my tangent value again, is going to be sine over cosine, which is zero over one, which is zero. So I have zero, zero as one of my um, points, okay? Now what in the world is gonna go from zero to pi over two? Well, I know in my unit circle, right? I have this 45 degree angle right here. And 45 degrees, it's cool because 
in this 45 degrees, it's halfway between my vertical asymptote and my zero. So that's cool, right? And if I make a 45, 45, 90 triangle, this is one, this is one, this is rad two, not in the unit circle, but just in a regular old, um, regular 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? Where my tangent value is going to be y over x, which is one over one, which is one. So here, the tangent value equals one, right? So I know going back to my, um, this is pi over four, by the way, 45 degrees is pi over four. So it's halfway between here, right? That's going to be pi over four, and that's going to be, I'm going to label this as one, label that as one. Okay. So there is my point here. So I know this curve is going to go here, but it's going to go towards my um, vertical asymptote, never passing my vertical asymptote. Okay. So what's going to go from zero to negative pi over two? Well, I can again go back to my unit circle, right? And it's getting messy now, but you guys can see I have another 45 degree angle here, right? And that's negative pi over four, right? Negative 45 degrees. If I make my unit, my 45, 45, 90 in my fourth quadrant, I'm just gonna make it here, okay? If this is a 45 degree angle or negative pi over four degree angle or radian angle, this is one, this is one, this is rad two, but I know that this is negative because I'm in my negative y axis, right? I'm in my fourth quadrant. So my tangent value is negative one over one, which is negative one. Okay. So here, I'm going to go here, negative one, and here, halfway between, this is pi over four, negative pi over four. And I have that point right there at negative one. So I make another, and that is one period. Okay, so it's gonna go like half a parabola, looking like a cubic function, a cube function, right? That's gonna go towards my vertical asymptotes, all right? That's one period of tangent, okay? Cotangent, is going to be the same unit circle. Okay, I'm not going to show you the unit circle that I was using because it's getting too messy. But if you think about it, right, this is undefined, right, at pi over 2. Anywhere that's from pi over 2, right, the tangent is undefined. And you know that the tangent function and the cotangent function are reciprocal values, okay? If it's undefined here, then at pi over two, there's gonna be a zero, right? Or this should be pi over two. At pi over two, it's gonna be zero, right? Because the reciprocal of undefined is zero. The reciprocal of zero, which in my tangent function happens to be at zero, Zero, zero is my point. Here at the cotangent, there is going to lie a vertical asymptote. Okay, so there's my vertical asymptote there. Okay. And you know, at high degrees, my cotangent is undefined because that's going to be negative one over zero. So I'm going to go two units over at pi degrees, at pi radians, that's going to be my vertical asymptote as well. Okay? All right? So here lies my one period from zero to pi. Here lies my one period from negative pi over two to pi over two. All right? And then Pi over four, which is here, pi over four, two pi over four, and this will be three pi over four, right? Pi over four, I know that 
the reciprocal of one is one. So this point still lies here, okay? And this point at three pi over four, if you graph it really quick, okay? If you graph it really quick at three pi over four, that's the 45 degree angle in my second quadrant, right? That's my, this is three pi over four. And then this is pi over four. So I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So one, one, rad, two, but I'm in my negative X axis. So that's negative. So my cotangent value is negative one over one, which is negative one. So I have here at negative one, and then here is my parabola, half parabola, the one that looks like a cube function, okay? And there is my um, one period of cotangent, okay? So if you kind of compare the two, the only difference that these two have is where um, the vertical asymptotes lie and how my curve looks. Okay, this one kind of is increasing. This one is decreasing. All right, so there's a couple of key features that you can kind of tell the difference between tangent and cotangent. All right, so that's the basics of this to kind of, um, give you the points okay, while we're graphing this. This one, my X and Y, we're gonna start off with negative pi over two, undefined, okay? Negative pi over two is undefined, so there's a vertical asymptote there. At zero, it's zero. At pi over two, there's another undefined. So it's my vertical asymptote. And then um, pi over four, it's gonna be at one. And at negative pi over four, it's gonna be at negative one. So there's basically five points there that we have to graph. And then we're just gonna smooth it out by doing this um, curve, okay? My cotangent graph, I'm gonna have zero undefined. So that's my vertical asymptote. I'm gonna have pi over two at zero. Pi is gonna be my other undefined point. So there's my vertical asymptote again, okay? And then my two points are gonna be the same point, pi over four, one, as my tangent graph, and three pi over four, negative one. Okay, so there's my five points there. So if you guys want, you guys can um, copy that down. And that is my parent function, okay? So from here on out, I'm gonna be working with like transformations. Okay, what happens if I have an A value or a B value or even a C or a D value, right? We're gonna be transforming this graph, but then this graph is going to be our um, basis, okay? All right. And again, it's gonna look a little bit different, but let's work through it. Okay, so here I have my first, um, Function two tangent of x. So basically, if you think about it, it's the parent function times two, right? So in my vertical stretch, I'm just vertically stretching this graph here, okay? So if I vertically stretch it out, my vertical asymptotes even though you stretch out a vertical line, it's still gonna be the same vertical line. So that doesn't change. What changes is the depth or the, um, 
the stretch, I'm gonna stretch out this curve, okay? So instead of negative one and one, it's gonna go to negative two and two. So that's the only change here. So I'm gonna start off with my vertical asymptotes at pi over two and negative pi over two, okay? There's my vertical asymptotes, right? At pi over two and negative pi over two. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go zero, zero, because that's one of my points as well. If that's one, that's two. If this is negative one, this is negative two. And at pi over four, I know it's one, but it's stretched out to two. At negative pi over four, I know it's negative one, but it's stretched out to negative two. So here is my graph, right? It's stretched out, okay? That's pretty simple. If you just have an A value right there, if you just have an A value right there, then it's just the, um, the curve that stretches out, all right? Next one, we have negative two, cotangent of x. So again, I can think of the cotangent graph, my parent function is going to be multiplied by negative two. So again, my vertical asymptotes do not change. So I have a vertical asymptote at zero and at pi, right? So that's pi over two, this is gonna be pi. So I have this guy here. Okay, at pi, there's my vertical asymptotes. Now remember, when we stretch this out like this, the vertical lines do not change, right? So at pi over two, I know it's zero. One unit over, I know it's gonna be one. 2, negative 1, negative 2. But I know at 1, it's going to be multiplied by negative 2. So it's going to be 1 times negative 2. So that's negative 2. At pi over 4, it's going to be negative 1, but it's going to be multiplied by negative 2. So that's going to be positive 2. So that would be my function there. Okay, so the, the, the curve would flip, okay? Oops. I'm sorry. The curve, I flipped it incorrectly. Um, so here's my vertical asymptote at my x-axis. Right, and then here is my, or my y-axis. My x-axis is here, right? So here is my vertical asymptote, again, at my y-axis. And then at pi, it's gonna be another vertical asymptote. At pi over two, it's gonna be zero. one, two, negative one, negative two, okay? So at pi over four, it's gonna be one. One times negative two is negative two. And then at three pi over four, it's gonna be negative one. Negative one times negative two is gonna be positive two. So here is my graph, okay? So that's the graph of y equals two cotangent of x, okay? And I apologize for the, the mistake that I did. All right? So that's pretty simple when you have an A value, you just stretch out that curve, everything else just stays the same. But now what happens when I have the two as my B value? Okay, so I know my period 
is going to be pi over b, so pi over 2. So you know how I had my asymptotes, vertical asymptotes of the tangent value, right, the tangent at negative pi over 2 and at pi over 2. I'm going to actually divide these out by 2, OK? If I divide it out by 2, then that comes out to be negative pi over 4 and pi over 4. So this here is my new vertical asymptotes, OK? So by doing this, my period being pi over 2, you guys will see from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, that has a distance of pi over 2. Okay, so instead of making it 2, if I make this negative pi over 2, here is my vertical asymptote. Right there. And then here is my vertical asymptote. Okay, and if that's pi over 2. Okay, so two blocks equals pi over two. But you see the, the vertical asymptotes kind of at zero, zero, it's still zero. At zero, it's still zero, right? Now, I know that pi over four, my vertical asymptote, it was one, right? Let's still make this one and make this negative one. But you also know Use this fact. Halfway between my vertical asymptote and zero, this is my parent function. Halfway between zero and pi over two, right, is a value of one. Halfway between negative pi over two and zero is going to be a value of negative one. Using that fact, halfway between zero and pi over four is going to be pi over eight. And there, lies my one halfway between here and here, here and negative pi over eight, there lies my negative one. So there's my curve there, okay? So you can see if I kind of put this on top of it, you guys can see the um, how my period went from pi over two to pi, or negative pi over two to pi over two, and it kind of shrunk, right? And that has a period, this distance from here to here is actually pi over two, okay? So that's pi over four, that's pi over four, pi, pi over four plus pi over four is pi over two, all right? Okay, so, that is that. And now I'm going to add in a little shifting. OK? So this is y equals 2 times the x minus pi over 2. And in this case, I know my period is going to be pi over this number 2 again, right? And my vertical asymptotes for my cotangent is going to be at 0 and at pi. So there, if I divide both by 2 again, it's going to be from 0, because 0 divided by 2 is still 0, and pi over 2, right? So it went from 0 pi to 0 comma pi over 2. So here is my vertical asymptotes. And here is pi over 2. And there's my vertical asymptote there. And at 0 is my other, um, my other vertical asymptote, okay? Okay. So 
I know halfway between these two um, vertical asymptotes lies my zero. I know halfway between zero and pi over, and this halfway between that, which is pi over four. It's gonna be pi over eight, and that's one. Halfway between here is gonna be negative one. Okay, so here, I'm gonna actually just graph for you in this color, that's y equals cotangent of 2x. Okay, I just graphed that. Now, making this move, right? This in transformationally, it's to the right by pi over two. So I'm gonna move everything to the right pi over two. That means from this, um, Vertical asymptote at zero, it's gonna to move to the right pi over two, which is this vertical asymptote, okay? This vertical asymptote at pi over two, the brown one, it's gonna to move to pi, which is right here. Okay, and that's pi. Okay, this zero is gonna move two units over because two units is pi over two. Zero, that halfway between, halfway between is negative one. There is my graph. All right. So my last example for you is this one. And this one, I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna do the steps. Okay, so here, the first step, I'm gonna graph y equals negative tangent of four x, okay? So my period is going to be pi over four, okay? And I know my vertical asymptotes for a tangent function is gonna be at negative pi over two and at pi over two. So if I divide both by four, I get negative pi over eight and pi over eight, okay? So pro tip, I am just gonna make it neat and nice and make this guy negative pi over eight and this guy, pi over eight. Okay, you can label your x axis however you want. Okay, in order to, for this to be nice and neat and kind of spaced out, I'm gonna label it pi over eight and negative pi over eight. Okay, so here again, my period is still pi over four. Right, because pi over eight plus pi over eight is pi over four. Okay, so halfway between is zero. Halfway between zero and positive pi over eight is one. So there's one. There's negative one. Halfway between here and here, it's gonna be negative one. And here is my graph. So I just graphed, oh, I just graphed positive tangent of four x, right? But since it's negative, I'm gonna graph it like this and like this, right? So then here in pencil, hopefully you guys can see it. Maybe this, you guys can see it better. It's a little darker. Here is, here is y equals negative tangent of four x. Okay, I'm gonna turn this light back on. All right. So now I just have to move this in pi plus pi over two. That means I'm gonna move it to the left, pi over two. And I'm gonna move this guy down one, right? Okay. So if I move this over to the left, pi over two, 
Now I made two boxes pi over eight, right? Two boxes, two units equals pi over eight. So how many units do I have to go to the left? I'm pausing because I want you to think about that question. If two units equals pi over eight, and I want to go to pi over two units to the left, I have to move this eight times, right? Two units, four units, that's two pi over eight, right? If this is pi over eight, and I want to move this over pi over, this would be two pi over eight. This would be three pi over eight. This would be four pi over eight. And this would be five pi over eight, right? Does that make sense? Every two units is pi over eight. So one pi or negatives, because I'm in my negative x axis. Negative pi over eight, negative two pi over eight, negative three pi over eight, negative four pi over eight, negative five pi over eight. All right. So you know from zero, let's start off at zero because zero going pi over two units to the left is the easiest. I just need to go pi over two, right? Which one is pi, negative pi over two? Four pi over eight is my zero, my new zero. This point moved over one, two, three, four, right? Four pi over eight, which is negative pi over two. Okay, so let's count. One, two, three, four. This line here, I gotta move it four times. One, two, three, four. Right? To this line right here. Right? I move this line, one, two, three, four, right? Move, I'm gonna move this line, one, two, three, four, to this point right there, okay? So now this point, I know halfway between these two lines is gonna be one, or yeah, that point, I know halfway between these two lines is going to be this point. So this green graph here represents y equals negative tangent of 4x plus pi over 2. Okay? Represents that. Now with the minus 1, so going down 1, it doesn't really do anything with the um, vertical asymptotes. All I'm going to do here is move these three points down one, down one, down one, and here's my new curve. Okay? So there is my tangent function. Okay? So the blue with the green vertical asymptotes is going to be y equals negative tangent of four times x plus pi over two minus one. All right, that's my final, final, final. And it, when you do it by hand, it is going to be this messy. So just be weary of it. Um, and don't worry about neatness. I mean, it's kind of neat, but don't worry about how confusing it is. When I do grade it, I will know what's going on. All right. And that's the lesson for um, graphing tangent and cotangent. So I'll see you on the next one.